Humanity constantly defines new goals for creating change and driving development. For example, the Millennium or the Sustainable Development Goals. Nevertheless, the world finds itself in a severe imbalance, which causes a tremendous injustice. Approximately 10% of the world population is living in extreme poverty. One in three people globally do not have access to safe drinking water. This leads to disease, death, and major inequalities among countries, nations, regions, and also gender. The worst thing about it is, we technically have enough resources, but we fail to distribute them. Most of us who see these inequalities develop a willingness to combat them, especially when noticing that one may be better off. Promoting development has become even more important with the current crises that are shaking the world. According to the UN Development Program, 90% of all countries fell, fell behind five years in their development over 2021. Personally, I've experienced water-related problems at a very early age. Growing up in Sri Lanka, a little teardrop-shaped island under India, I came to realize soon that it was indeed a problem if the monkeys that used our house to commute from one mango tree to the next mango tree opened the tap on our rooftop and we would come back home to an empty water tank. I also realized this when it came to regular power cuts during the dry season, when the rivers did not have enough water to power the hydroelectric power plants. When I came back to Germany, we had no issues with electricity or water availability, and we could even drink water from the taps. For my bachelor's studies, I went to Colombia. Here once again, the inequalities became very apparent. This time, not only the water quantity issues, but also water quality. Issues became incredibly visible. I don't know who of you has been to the Amazon basin before, but the river is incredibly polluted. Especially at the harbors, you will find all sorts of rubbish swimming on the surface. From plastic bottles to even dead animals, all sorts of things can be found here. And only a few meters downstream, you'll find children swimming in that same water, exposing themselves to major health risks. So what can we do to combat these kind of problems? Should we work together, strive for sustainable development based on a profound exploration of a situation, communication with each other with affected people, and an impact analysis? Or is it enough to deliver money and technologies? This is, of course, a very rhetorical question. Let's look at one example. Let's imagine we want to secure the energy supply within a certain region by installing a hydroelectric power plant. So we build a dam and a river. If we do not inform ourselves or communicate with the local population, thus if we do not evaluate the impact, we will probably do more harm than good by constructing this dam because we will affect the flow regime of the river, probably the fish migration, and also the water users living downstream of the dam. If we install technologies in the plant without a knowledge transfer, we create dependencies. These types of projects are not well thought through, and they do not take into account the possibly conflicting interests of different user groups and also present and future generations. A project of this type is most likely unsustainable as it cannot adapt to the increasing demand where resources are becoming more and more scarce. In addition, climate change makes long-term planning very difficult because of the high levels of uncertainties it involves. Why is it not desirable to go to places and impose help the way we think we should help? Why should we avoid to be overconfident? because we may have knowledge and technologies which are helpful in our realms, but this does not mean that we can do a one-to-one -one transferal into a completely new situation, because the parameters that are defining the project are completely different. As before, the countries with the highest exposure, vulnerability, and therefore most affected by water scarcity and climate change are located near the equator. Would I, as a German, know what forces of nature and weather conditions I have to deal with? 
Do I know which material weather tested in these realms and which material is available at all? The socio-political situation is different. Would I, as a German woman, know what to expect and how to handle certain, at times maybe critical, situations? Am I in a position to negotiate? And also the cultural aspects are different. What are the roles of people in societies? What role might different beliefs or religion play? Of course, I can inform myself to a certain extent, but it would be very naive to think that I can grasp the complexity of a country, region, or society with minimum preparations within some weeks or months. And even if you do think you have informed yourself in depth, your view on things will always be biased by your own cultural background. There's one story I would like to tell you about. In the context of a development project, a cistern was installed for a local village in a small town in an African country. The, wa the rainwater tank was supposed to supply the community with fresh water. There was a big celebration when the construction was completed. And then what happened? No one was retrieving water from the tank. And at first, it was not really obvious why this was the case. We found out that with the construction of the rainwater tank, we had deprived the local women of their very important role in their community. Because their role was to retrieve water from the well located a couple of kilometers outside of the town. They did not accept the cistern because they did not know how to place it and themselves in the new environment. Only when the local priest made the women the guardians of the cistern was when the community accepted the new source of fresh water. This example actually also raises one of the most important questions that should be clarified in advance of a project through communication and exploration. Is change even desired? And is there someone on the ground with whom cooperation with jointly defined sustainable development goals is possible? Currently, I'm working on a project in a rural area in an African country. In this project, building cisterns is the essence. So far, we have built 87 cisterns, repaired 52, and thereby ensured water supply for about 600 people. By building the rainwater tanks, we establish an alternative freshwater source and thereby enhance water supply security, especially during the dry season. By providing this alternative freshwater source, the overexploitation of other natural resources is counteracted, and we can in a way say that this leads to higher environmental sustainability. However, much more impacting is actually the social sustainability. Wells that can provide water in the dry phase are often located far outside the villages. So fetching water is time consuming and exhausting. Adults who don't have to fetch water have more energy and time for wage labor, for working on the fields and for long-term planning. Often also children are responsible for fetching the water. Of course, when the children are fetching the water, they cannot go to school. So they miss out on education. When water fetching is no longer necessary, the children will have the opportunity to go to school, maybe attend secondary school, and if they do well, even higher educational institutions. This, this effect unfolds years after the construction of the cistern. Thus, the rainwater tank indirectly creates prospects and better chances for the positive development of the families. We saw it exemplified in 2018 with a family that had received a cistern in 2009, and we were really impressed by what they had achieved. So who builds these cisterns, and how is this project financed? We at Engineers Without Borders Germany are working closely with an organization. This organization is local and consists of a management committee and nine user groups, with a 10th currently in the process of joining. These user groups are spread throughout the project area. Families or people who join a user group can have a rainwater cistern constructed next to their house. These people will pay a fraction of the costs of the construction to the organization. This is what we call the tank money. This means that through the construction of the rainwater tank, the organization generates money. 
And there is an additional beneficial mechanism of this organization, which makes the project economically sustainable. Even before the user groups merged into this organization, table banking was practiced within the respective groups. Through the union, there is now a much bigger platform to practice table banking. Members can pay money into the organization according to their possibilities. If money is then needed for individual projects, personal use or group projects, the double of what was contributed may be loaned. This means that the assets generated by the tank money and the contributions of the user groups enable the organization to distribute microcredits without the hassle of banks or high interest rates. This, on the other hand, means that in addition to the construction of the rainwater tanks, very different projects or investments are supported, and that individuals with a low irregular income can be, can be granted with opportunities. We had one female member that loaned money to cultivate a melon field, for example. Currently, we are still financing the cisterns at 100%. However, in cooperation, we have managed to establish an association that can hopefully, sustainably, and long-term continue to grow and prosper, even after we have withdrawn from the project completely. At this very moment, we are in the final phase of construction. There will be a minimum of 24 cisterns built in the next few months. Because of the pandemic, this construction phase is being done entirely remotely. This is a first step towards making the organization independent. As we are no longer active on site, but we only provide support and assistance from Germany. This is working quite well, which makes us feel positive and optimistic that the lifespan of the project will be long term. For me, this is an example of how development through cooperation, communication, and trust can provide a long-term impact, namely by creating a fertile ground for ongoing development, by promoting mechanisms and processes that already exist in order to create something from which new things can continuously emerge, and something which is constantly evolving and adapting to changing conditions. Also through collaboration on an equal footing, by exchanging ideas and expertise, adopting interdisciplinary approaches, and engaging in a continuous dialogue. Of course, a certain degree of trust is very beneficial as well. This project also exemplifies how sustainability functions and works on different levels, and that we need to adapt these levels to a respective situation. I've learned an incredible amount during my time involved in this project that has helped me in life and my scientific work. When I'm not involved in international projects, I'm doing my PhD at the Technical University of Darmstadt, studying the impact of climate change on a regional river basin. In particular, I'm looking at the impacts of the changing climate on drought and water availability. And trust me, we do not have to travel to other continents to experience water-related problems. Climate change has started knocking on all of our doors a long, long time ago. So why should we assume that we know better? The situation is slipping away from us equally. Unfortunately, we do carry a certain responsibility because we have created most of the problems. Nevertheless, we are all stuck in the same boat and the changes in meteorological processes and the forces that are acting out on us will not pause or halt in front of country borders or nations. Therefore, we should strive to strengthen the global community by cooperating and thinking long-term and sustainable by sharing and learning from each other so that we can all develop to overcome the upcoming challenges together. Thank you so much for your kind attention.